Good afternoon and welcome to Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium on the campus of Delphus at St. John's High School. Today, WSN brings you the annual matchup. The Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds are here to play the Delphus St. John's Blue Jays. My name is Mark Shines, by play, do play by play. Alongside our color commentary and stat work is Mr. Dave Bowen. Dave, this is always a big game every year and obviously this year as well. A big game, you're exactly right. LCC and St. John's Sunday afternoon action, year in and year out. Last year and this year, they played in they're playing in December, obviously. In the past, it's usually late January, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, as a coach, you come over here and you scout it, and at that point in the year, you're starting to think where you're going to be down the stretch drive. When do you play St. John's? When do you play LCC? It's a convention, basically, when it's in late January with all the coaches here. But it's in December now. The last four meetings, it's a 2-2 split. Let's call it a rubber game match here today, see who takes the, the lead at 3-2. Lima Central Catholic comes in 1-1. One one. They're coming off a loss the other night to Kaleida, 35-53. to 53. How about keys to the game and observations about the Lima Central Catholic team? Well, first and foremost, 1-1. One and one. They've only played two games because of their football success. Coach Frank Kill, he's real high on this squad, and it revolves around number 10, Carson Park. The 6'2 junior forward had 22 points in game number one. That stingy collided defense in game two held him to four. We'll look to see him rebound here today. But overall, LCC, you've got Carson Parker, you've got Willie Foster, the freshman, who's been a nice surprise here in the early going. The LCC T Birds, Coach Kill, he knows that defensively they've got to step it up. They've got to have an eye on the super freshman for St. John's number 11, Cameron Elwer, and then the senior, Landon Grothouse, as well. They've got to crash the offensive glass, and, and to do those things successfully will put them in a position to win this game. Delphi St. John's, Aaron Elwer's team, they are 4 and 1. They are also coming off a Friday night loss in the MAC conference play to New Bremen. Your analysis of the homestanding Blue Jays today. Well, the Blue Jays are 4 and 1. 0-1 in the MAC. It was a tough game Friday night. Uh, Coach Elwer had a chance to talk to him. He said it was like uh, New Bremen with their talent. You know, they won state of football. They muddied it up here at uh, Robert A. Arnson Gymnasium Friday night. But he really has a lot of faith in his squad as well. 4-1, they finished 500 last year. Off to a great start this year. And again, a lot of it revolves around that senior leadership of Landon Grothouse and, and Nolan Schwinnen. But the diaper dandy, the freshman, number 11, Cameron Elwer, he really sets the tone. Elwer is averaging 26 points a game. He's a stat stuffer with points for a game, 81% from the free throw line. And he also leads his squad in rebounding. It's just amazing what this young man's doing for the Blue Jays. But he makes everyone else so much better, especially the senior Grothouse, Landon Grothouse, who has had to do a lot, sometimes more than what he's capable of in the past. This year, he can let Elwer set things up, set the table, and he finishes, again, 4-1. Great high ceiling for the St. John's Blue Jays, and today they want to get back on track from Friday night's loss as well. Lima Central Catholic will start number 10, Carson Parker. They average 13 a game. Number 12 was Matthew Quatman. He averages 7 a game. 14 is Willie Foster. He averages 8. 24, Michael Tafflinger averages 6 a game. Also averaging 6 a game is Billy Burke. For the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays, they will go with number 2, Landon Grothouse at 9.6 points per game. Number 4, Jack Gerker is a 5'11 senior, averaging 3.8. Nolan Schwendworth, number 5, he's a 6-foot senior. Cameron Elwer, 6-foot freshman, averaging 26 a game and made 23-point field goals in five games. And number 33, Aaron Munter, who is a 6'2 junior. Our officials today, A.J. Kremer, Mike Lampton, Scott Nurse. Well, that wraps up our pregame from the Delphi St. John's. The opening tip coming up right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium. It's Lima Central Catholic. It's Delphi St. John's here on a Sunday afternoon. Our scoreboard today is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Re Recipe Chicken home style happens here. One change to the starting lineup, the Lima Central Catholic will start Parker Judy, a junior who wears number 20, and he will be in the lineup instead of Michael Tapplinger. 
And uh, we're sure Michael will be in there soon. He has been uh, a sixth man for them throughout the season. The starting lineups underway. LCC comes in averaging 51 points per game. They give up 54. They have a win over Bath and a loss to Kaleida. Delphi St. John's comes in averaging 53 a game. They give up 43.6. And their single loss in uh, this particular season was to New Bremen in Mac play on a Friday night. Here's Burke. He's going to jump center. And he will do so against, that was number 33, Aaron Munter, and LCC wins the tip. And St. John's in their patented man-to-man -man defense, Mark. Here's Parker, here's Foster, the freshman. Parker down low, a little jump shot, and he will have the first basket of the game with Carson Parker. Nice strength there by Parker, getting the ball in the block, taking it up strong. This is Landon Grothaus, and we're tied at two. It's going to be a slow-paced game, Dave. How <laughs> I mean, many points on the board? <laughs> two looks, two buckets, yeah, yeah. one each way. Each team gets a basket in the first 20 seconds of this one. Here's Parker, rolls around, doesn't go. Rebound, Munter. Now yeah, we're on the right side again, probing, making the read, just being real steady. LCC being cognizant of where he's at. Good help from... Carson Parker to get the first turnover in the basketball game. Here's Foster. Roadhouse picks him up and forces him to take a difficult shot. Here's the rebound comes to Etzler, uh, to Elwer. And they're trying to get to him in a hurry with his three-point shooting prowess. We'll talk about his numbers as the game progresses. Cameron Elwer working. Good defense by the T-Birds. Swenin goes up. That shot will not fall. Burke rebounds. Parker heads the other way. This is Billy Burke. Qua Matthew Quatman throws it into Burke. This will be a three. And back of the rim. Good check out. Good rebound comes to Landon Grothaus. Well, here's Grothaus working the lane. Munter tries to get inside, can't get there. Patented St. John's offense under the direction of Coach Aaron Elwer in his 16th season. They're going to swing the ball on offense. It's not going to stick. They're going to keep it moving, look to penetrate to the basket, get that defense going from side to side and find some driving lanes or some open looks. Again, LCC playing great defense here early on. Ethan Druckermiller will inbound or come into the basketball game. He wears number 15. Here's Grothaus to the rim, and we get an and one opportunity. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. Scott Nurse on the call. Grothaus going to go to the line. Parker Judy picks up his first foul, team's second. Landon Grothaus, well, he's pretty good at the free throw line. 92.9% on the season. Leads the team. You'll take that, won't you, Coach? Absolutely. And that was dead center. You see why he shoots it well. And he's got the first five points of the game for the Blue Jays. Quatman in trouble. Yeah. yeah, look at the trap. Foster goes to the rim and finishes. Great job of the pressure defense fighting it with pressure offense as Willie Foster gets to the rim and scores. Schwinn and swings it around. Jump around the corner. That one three ball goes for Jack Gerker. His seventh three-point field goal of the season. Pretty shot, had the feet set. Nice pass from Elwer. Splashes it. Looking inside to Burke, can't get it there. We get both these squads really improved from last year. Doing a nice job. Bob pass inside, good catch, but unable to finish inside was Carson Parker. Rebound comes to Rooker Miller. Elwers passes into Burke's hands. Here's a lob ahead. And the rim, number left-handed finish. Parker has points three and four and a good outlet pass. Yeah, nice outlet pass by Willie Foster. Again, running the floor is Carson Parker. When you can get easy buckets in a game like this, that will definitely work to your advantage. 8-6. Here's Elwer spins in the lane. Gets his own rebound. Here's Grothaus. Nice shot. He's nice. got seven yeah. in the quarter. Great shot. Nice defense by Carson Parker right there. Grothaus goes over the top. Lob inside and finishing inside is Carson Parker. Found him with a nice pass. 
Both of these teams did not shoot the ball very well in their last game. They fixed that here in the first quarter as far as that's concerned, Mark. Schwenning goes to the rim. Kick out. This ball will be shot by Gerker. Second three-point field goal for him in the quarter. Straight dice from the arc, behind the arc. We're having some fun here yeah. offensively. LCC, when they get in the half-court set, we're going to have a foul underneath. Yep. Got Schwinnen, I believe. First T-Bird foul. They're looking for that transition bucket, but when they get in their half-court set, they're really looking hard for Carson Parker on the block and Billy Burke on the block, looking to attack the interior defense of the Blue Jays. It's Quatman, the sophomore, and what do we got? Oh, we got a sub coming in the game. Looks like we'll get Michael Tafflinger as we expected to pop in the game early. Senior averaging six points a game. Screen to screener under, bound, under yeah. out of bounds for the T-Birds. There's Quatman. Pull up jumper. Nice shot. Won't fall. Burke rebounds and kicks it back out. Offensive rebound opportunities. Coach Elworth said that would be a concern for his squad against the height inside. We see it here early on taking effect as the T-Birds maintain possession. Looking inside a lot to Burke on they this sure possession. Are. Yep, good help that time. Here's a three ball, and Burke rebounds that one and finishes Billy Burke's first basket. Two offensive rebounds on the possession allows the T-Birds to come away with the field goal. Billy Burke, nice work inside. 13-10 home team. Grothouse accepts the screen and the steal. Parker headed the other way. Carson Parker all the way to the rim and finishes. Nice job by Carson Parker attacking the defense. Cameron Elwer had to back off. Nice bucket for the T-Birds. Again, a transition bucket. Roadhouse, three ball out of the corner. Wow, he splashed oh. another one. He's got eight of those on the season. His first today, he's got 10 in the quarter. We said that in the pregame that Grothaus has been able to play a little bit within himself more this year than in the past. The Elward tips it out of bounds. Landon Grothaus averages 9.6 points per game. He's got 10 in the opening quarter. Well, we're just five and a half minutes into this one. Here comes uh, Angelo Collins into the game. He's a sophomore. And uh, also in the basketball game is Drew Boggs, who wears number 23 for Delphus St. John's, and also Parker Judy will return. Yeah, you mentioned Landon Grothaus. He's got three threes thus far. He just looks so much more comfortable out there this year, being able to play within himself and get the and receive the pass from uh, Elwer a lot of the time. Tafflinger traveled with the basketball, trying to make a pass that wasn't there. And the defense yes, provided by whom? Yeah. Landon hey. Grothaus. Here's a surprise. You walk into the gym and Delphi St. John's is playing man-to-man. -man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can about put that in the sky report every year, can't you? Because every year they're one of the top man-to-man -man teams around. Absolutely. Grothaus trapped out front. Finally gets the ball in the sideline past him. Munter. This is Boggs who checked in a moment ago. And in Grothaus, heat check, missed that one. Gets his own rebound, but gets it stripped loose. A nice diving ball play by Parker Judy to secure the ball for the T-Birds. Nice job poking the ball away and getting the turnover on the Jays. Oh, Carson Parker lights it up. That's his first three-point field goal of the season, and he's got 11 here in the opening quarter. Yeah, he is definitely the definition of the stretch four. He'll post you up and hit that three as he does, does right there. Nicely done. Stretch four, hybrid, big, whatever you want to call it. He's a competitor. Here's another three. That one bounces around and scrambling in to get his own rebound, and we're going to down the floor, and we're going to get a foul. I think we're going to call number the 33, Angelo Collins, for a push going for the loose ball. Third team foul, his first. Comes a hockey line substitution as three Blue Jays check back in, including Austin Munter playing for the first time today. 
And both teams go fairly deep into the bench, especially here early in the season. I do think you'll see that yeah. shorten up a little bit as the season progresses. 24 is Joel Schrader. He checked in as well. That's his jump shot to foul line. And he goes and gets his own rebound. The guy who shoots it typically knows where that rebound's going, and he went and tracked that one down. He certainly did. Penetration dribble, Schwenin. Steele, Foster, what do we got? I think we're going to have an offensive foul. Yeah, we call yes. it a pushing foul on Aaron Munter. Aaron's first foul, team's second, as he shoved Carson Parker to the floor. This is one of those games if you're an official, you want to get the control of things early. You, cert you certainly do. In that situation there, I don't think the official saw that the ball had been knocked away yet, but there was still contact. Made the call, right call. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press. T-Birds. Foster tries to dribble through the trap, and fortunately does. Here's Quatman. Back to man-to-man -to -man as they do. Collins inside. Four on one down low, and they're ripping it loose. Nice double team there by the Blue Jays. Elwer inside, goes off glass and scores his first basket. Cameron Elwer. Just so strong for a freshman, six, the six-footer is. Carson Parker in the lane. That one rims out for him. Elwer rebounds. Blue Jays, last shot opportunity, leading by three. Skip pass. Schwenin's going to get a three. Doesn't go with the buzzer. A lot of points on the board. Three more of them for the home team. Heading to second quarter action in just a moment. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium. Lee's famous recipe chicken in Wapak and Delphus sponsoring our scoreboard today. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Got some stat numbers, Dave, that interest you? We're working on it. Uh, St. John's shot the ball extremely well. Both teams did. Five for seven from two, three for six from three, eight for 13 overall. LCC six for 11 from two, one for three from three. And again, both teams, both coaches, much more pleased with the shooting percentages offensively than their game Friday night here in the first quarter. If that's a reflection of what we're going to see the rest of the way, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mark. I'm looking at the you know, Delphus averages 53 points a game, LCC 51. We've got 18 and 15 on the board here, so we got a lot of points on the board, and I think both coaches are happy offensively, maybe not so much defensively. Here's Gro uh, Elwer working the lane, and it spins out on that smooth jump shot he's got. They throw it ahead to Parker Judy. Nice save there by Carson yeah. Parker. Foster long three. That's hard. Burke rebounds. So again, another offensive rebound. That might become a storyline for the T-Birds. Landon Grodhaus had 10 in the opening quarter. Carson Parker 11 to lead their two teams. Each team had three guys score in a quarter. We're going to get a blocking foul that will put Matthew Quatman to the free throw line. That goes to Nolan Schwen, and he becomes the first player in the game with two fouls. Yeah, nice move by Quatman there to get into the paint and draw the contact. He'll go to the free throw line. He's a 62% free throw shooter. Splash, his first point of the game. Back in the game, Jack Kirker also back in the game will be Angelo Collins. You know, Quatman, the sophomore, talking to Coach Kill, he said, Matt might be one of those kids that, you know, the other coach says, where did he come from? And uh, he starts for the T-Birds this year. They don't start a senior, although they have a heavily laden senior bench, and they'll look for those guys to come in and contribute. But Quatman is a young man that, that just does a lot of the, the things that you don't see on the stat sheet, Mark. And again, he's doing that here today at, up to this point. Austin Munter took himself out of the basketball game as he has some blood on his knee. He'll be replaced by Ethan Brickenmiller. And that one will not go. And man just checked in the game, grabs the rebound. And that's good about Austin Munter. He's been dealing with a sprained ankle, just a little blood there. 
Foster tipped that one loose, and Quatman goes for the steal and got called for reaching his hand in the cookie jar. Now Matthew has two fouls. Just talking with Coach Gill about. And that out brings game, yes. yeah, Carson Parker into the game. Yep. Trying to plead his case to stay in the game here, but two fouls. He'll probably get back in before the half, just settle down a little bit, and understand how you got to play with that foul situation. This is Elwer. Nice bounce pass, but good defense. They get the wall build up inside. He can't score. Excellent rotation over. Landon Grothaus. Here's Angelo Collins with the rebound. Here's Foster. There's your ball reversal. See what you got. The Jays do a good job with help side defense. There's some Parker trying to get to the rim. Angelo Collins goes off glass and scores his first basket. Well, it's definitely obvious that in the half court situation, the T-Birds want to get the ball oh, inside. What a play There's defensively. A pick. And Foster goes right to the rim and scores. How about the good low hand from Willie Foster? How about the timeout, Aaron Elwer? We got 6.14 to go in a second. Two point lead for the Thunderbirds. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku and Apple TV channel. You can subscribe for $100 and we'll allow you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Great, about the defensive yeah, play? Great defensive play by Willie Foster. Stayed low, got his hand on the ball, and again, another live ball turnover that the T-Birds are able to convert into a bucket. Great timeout by Coach Elwer. 5-0 run to begin the second quarter here for the T-Birds. Puts them up two, 20 to 18. Slip screen. That was a well done play, and Ethan Buchanan ends up with a basket. Nicely done. Yes, sir. Need a little more defensive rotation. Burke for three. And a rebound foul. Yeah, that's a good play by Drupal. Had to get the check out. And Angelo Collins picks up his second foul. Team's fifth. Excellent check out. Coach Elworth's got to be real pleased with that. Draw the foul. Here's a surprise. Thunderbirds and Blue Jays playing fundamentally in sound. Exactly. Yeah, how about yeah. that? You could just count on that every year. Foster harassing Grothaus. It's another slip screen. Good recovery there by Collins. Knocked it out of bounds. Ball stays with the St. John's Blue Jays wearing their white uniforms today. Roadhouse. Coming off two screens is Elwer. That was a pretty play. Nice play. You're right. Double screen. We saw the first one. Then he comes off the second. Created confusion with the T-Bird defense. Left him wide open. 21st three-point field goal of the season for Cameron Elwer. Now his team's up all of a sudden. That three ball doesn't go. Another good rebound position inside. That time Munter, Munter gets it. Chalk that is a really good Coach Elward timeout. They've scored the last five points coming out of that timeout. Yep, 1-5-0 run. Goes up against oh. another. You're right. Knocked out of bounds. The ball will stay with the Blue Jays. And we're going to get uh, Matthew Quatman back in, as you predicted. There's a couple of fouls and a free throw made today. Let's see if the, Saint, if the Johnnies run their patented sideline out of bounds where they look for a flare screen. To the end of the ball here. Nope, going to run that same kind of double screen for Elwood. Yep. That one he left a little bit short. Here's the pass ahead, Quatman. Carson Parker got himself a little bit too far under and couldn't finish. Everything but scored it. They yeah. shot the ball down to the other end of the floor without a dribble. That was really pretty. Just got to finish. Elwood ball handling into the lane. This will be a three ball for Munter. The bounce is around and Burke rebounds. Here's Carson Parker. Coach killed imploring yeah. his guys to 
go one more. They, he won that ball reverse, so Foster could see the penetration there, but St. Johnson did a nice job of help side defense took that penetration away. But also a nice job of not forcing the action. And Correct. gets a nice baseline jumper, but that one's rebounded by Elwer. Here comes Cameron with his good head up. pass. Nice. And a really good job by Aaron Munter to wait for the defense to fly by and score his first basket. Seven consecutive points coming out of the timeout. Burke with the catch nice. and finishes. How about the pass. Yeah, nice pass there. Good drop steps at both ends. Good footwork by Dirk Miller and Burke there. Consecutive baskets. Elwood coming off the screen. And they surround him. And we're going to get that Foster get the foul. Let's wait and see. It is. Willie Foster picks up his first foul. And team sixth. If you're going to penetrate to the middle of the basket, or the middle of the paint, I should say, against this T-Bird squad or against any T-Bird squad, you better take care of the rock because they're going to be coming in trying to knock that ball away. They do it so well. Seeing a DSJ seven-point run, Coach Kill takes a timeout. You're going to watch, uh, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. TV44 and WS Center, nonprofit organization supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Visit WTLW.com. Good timeout. Excellent timeout there by Coach Kill. Again, that run that he's seeing here against his T-Birds and both teams transition offense. It's it's very solid. They're doing a nice job of pushing the ball down the floor. Turnover wise, we have around three for St. John's and two for LCC. So clean basketball. Right to the rim and finishing is Landon Grothaus. Points 11 and 12 for him. The lead grows to five. And we get a foul inside. T.J. Wirtz checked in right before the timeout. He is a six-foot sophomore for the Blue Jays. Joel Schrader is going to pick up that okay. personal foul, not or an off-the-ball foul. It's he and Billy Burke are in there battling, and they're going to call another one, I believe. And yeah, we're going to get the ball out of bounds. That one also goes to Schrader as he was playing very physical with Billy Burke. Burke tries to pin him inside. He's doubled up. Then Parker, nope, they knocked it out of bounds. He's going to be open for a moment. Again, you can see the T-Birds are trying to use their, their size, their height, create a mismatch. Two defenders were concerned with Burke. Carson Parker tried to find an opening on the opposite block. Carson Parker works in the lane, goes up with the right hand. Burke rebounds. Back to battle, and Wirtz is able to keep it away from him. Elwer accepts the screen and Burke jumps out on him. Good help. And the Grothaus with 12 points in the game. And now they swing it around. This is Grothaus again. Good pass inside and the finish. That's what happens when you spend too much time paying attention to Cameron Elwer. And a great job of the pick and roll off the reversal. And again, since it's off that reversal, just, and they do call the technical. Yep. Landon Grothaus hit the ball down hard on the floor, and he wasn't mad at anybody. I think he was upset with himself. He had a steal, just his momentum carried him out of bounds, but can't spike the ball like that. No. That counts as a, a, a personal foul towards him, and as well as a team foul, and we'll shoot the technical here, and then the Thunderbirds will get the basketball out of bounds. Carson Parker, should we jinx him? The Mike Shep jinx has not no. missed a free throw on the season. He is eight for eight. And continues that, thank you. <laughs> He's got a big smile on his face. Nine for nine now. That was point 12 for him in the game. He averages 13 a game. If he makes that, he'll have his average already, and it bounces away. I'll still take nine yeah, for 10 I think day. I'll do that too. Uh -huh. And I think I'll take 12 points, and we still got uh, 2.41 to go here in quarter number two. So it also breaks a, a string of points, Dave. Yeah, we'll see if the T-Birds go right back inside with possession. And we're going to get a hold. 
Landon Grothaus is going to get called for a hold. No, it was not him. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now that'll put yeah. Willie Foster on the free throw line because the T-Birds are in the bonus. Official signaled 14, and what he meant was 14 gets to go to the free throw line. <laughs> and we're going to give time for Grothaus, who now has two quick fouls to step into the free throw line area. Foster to the free throw line. He's got four points in the game, a basket in each quarter. How about the rebound that time and foul up inside by Carson Parker? Well, we said they were going to get the ball to him in that possession, but they got it to him off a missed free throw. Roadhouse, ball fakes, and then throws it, and good job by Elwood to save it. Big defensive possession for the T-Birds here. Oh, what a steal by oh, nicely done. Carson Parker went up and grabbed it with two hands, and then he bounced it off of Austin Munter. Caught the ball and played a little yes. dodgeball. How about that? Hit the guy on the opposing team while he was out of bounds. Great heads-up play. Two in a row for Parker, because again, on the missed free yep. throw, he caught that and shot it in one motion on that offensive rebound. Again, a key to this game that we're starting to see develop. The T-Birds hitting the offensive glass hard. Of course, we followed Carson Parker's athletic skills for a couple of years now. He's a junior quarterback on a football team, excellent baseball player. And good steal on the sideline. Who's going to get it? And Elworth comes out and scramble with it. No place for the weak of heart oh, on the loose ball. Elworth works the lane, 12-footer, got it. Left to right in the middle of the paint. And the home crowd loves it. Yes, they do. Big bucket for the Johnnies. Seven points in the game now for Elwer. His lead, team's lead goes back to six. Foster goes to the rim and gets a charging call as he runs over Ethan Druckenmiller. That's a nice shot with the penetration, but the St. John's defense rotated down there. Foster probably needed to jump stop and go up strong, but he tried to go through the contact. The defense was set. The offensive charge occurs. Willie Foster's second foul, and uh, that will bring in, I think it was Parker Judy come up off the bench to take his place. Each team has 17 fouls. Of course, we're not shooting because of the offensive foul situation that occurred. Six-point lead as we're at 90 seconds to go before the halftime break. Would you say things have ratcheted up a yes, little bit? They have. Yes, the sir. The defense has stepped up a little bit. And Elwer can't finish. Battles for the rebound. It comes to Quatman in the corner. Big rivalry game here. The T-Birds. Foster and the for Johnny's. three. Got there it. Goes. Really Foster. Big bucket for the T-Birds. Points five, six, and seven for Willie. Cuts the lead to three as we approach a minute to go, under a minute to go. Gurker was looking to go to the rim and could not. And here's Coach Elward up off the bench with some instructions. Here's a three ball. That one missed. Rebound on the backside to Carson Parker. He pushes in a hurry. Great check out. Here's a three out of the corner. Parker Judy likes the layup. Parker Judy, he's a glue guy for the T-Birds, not known for his scoring overall, but he had the wide open look. Corner pocket three, Mark. His first made three-point field goal of the season. We're tied at 31. Blue Jays playing last shot of the half. Cameron Elwer dribbling the ball. See what he does Number here, if they 10. set a screen for him or not, if he just probes, here's the screen. And they double him up. He kicks it to the corner. This will be a muncher three. Oh. Burke slaps it out of bounds. Billy Burke says, I'm coming from the paint. I'm going to get out there and swat it. Super defensive play by Billy Burke rotating over to the shooter. And did so without a foul. He went beside him rather than right at him. Really heads up defensive play. Two seconds to go. Elwer comes off of two screens and under pressure. Really good job defensively with just two seconds to go. Well, that's everything we expected it to be. We're tied at 31 as we go to the halftime break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
We're back at Robert A. Arms and Gymnasium. We're tied at 31 and a half. Prime Central Cut. Uh, Catholic Thunderbirds, quarters of the scores of 15 and 16 for their 31. Delta St. John's Blue Jays, 18 and 13 for their 31 points. Dave Boyle, you've got some stat numbers and some analysis. Yeah, we got some numbers from my stat man, Kent Ralston here. LCC, 13 for 26 from the floor, 50%. 10 for 18 from two, three for eight from three, two for five from the free throw line, and three turnovers. St. John's, 14 for 26. They've taken 26 shots as well. 58% overall, 10 for 15 from two, four for 11 from three, one for one from the line for turnovers. Coach Kill and his staff with the T-Birds offensively at halftime, I'm sure they talked about continue to look inside and hit the glass, continue to hit that offensive board. They've got a couple buckets there defensively. We gotta do a better job of defending the screening action, better with hedge and help. St. John's, Coach Elwer and his staff Offensively, guys, continue the great ball movement. Find some offensive boards. Let's get some offensive boards of ourselves, some second chance points. And let's not have any more light ball turnovers. We've given up uh, six to eight points approximately to the T-Birds off of light ball turnovers. And defensively, we got to continue to fight in the post. We can see that's where the T-Birds want to go. We'll provide help when it gets in there. And fundamentally, we got to check out. No second chance points for the T-Birds. Both teams evenly matched. We're getting what we wanted, Mark. Great game. I see nothing different here in the second half. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. On our scoreboard for Imer Central Catholic, Carson Parker leads that team in scoring. They have 14. Quarter scores 11 and 3 for him. Willie Foster has 7. Got 5 of those in quarter number 2. On the other side, Delphus St. John's. They are led by Landon Grothaus. He's got 12. Ten of those came in the opening quarter. Seven from Cameron Elwer. Five of those came in quarter number two. Everybody got out of the first half without picking up a third foul. That's a good thing. It sure is. And when you go deep into your bench, you can rotate guys in and out. And when they, you know, when that guy picks up that second foul, you can sit him down and put him back in. And we saw that happen with both squads. It's very, very warm in the gym today, too. And uh, obviously, being able to bring guys off the bench to stay fresh helps in that manner as well. Might be 26 degrees outside. It certainly is not that in this gym. Here's LCC. This is Parker. He of the 14 points. And now, wipe it off. Offensive foul. Landon Grothaus rotated over. His man was in the deep corner. He comes all the way into the paint. When Parker penetrated, he was in position to take the charge and does so. Great first defensive possession for the Blue Jays. It was Carson Parker's initial foul of the basketball game. I got to get me a mop like that. You know, my, my basement floor, my garage, my office, you know, and my, my garage, I could use a mop like that. And that young man in charge of it does he a great for, job. He is for a fact. Of course, my wife said, you have no idea what to do with a mop anyway, so <laughs> why would you want one? <laughs> we'll leave that right there, yeah, Mark. Yeah, we can do that. Here's, it's the holiday season. I won't go there on you. Here's Landon Grothaus off a of screen. Burke picks him up. Bounce pass across, and oh, unable to finish inside was Munter. Burke pressured that. T-Birds three on three, and what do we got? Offensive foul. Willie Foster ran over a Blue Jay. Landon Grothaus takes another one. Last year, Landon Grothaus took 32 charges. Wow. 32 charges. Most teams don't have more than 10 to 12 with yeah. the whole squad for the whole year. He took 32. He's taken two on the first two possessions here in the second half for the T-Birds. Hey, those are so, such great things, Dave. It's a turnover. It's a foul. It, it destroys your effort. I don't want to go to the basket anymore because it's going to happen to me again. Yep. There are so many positives happen when you take a charge. He's done two of them here uh, in the first 38 seconds. Here's Elwer. Gets a screen. To the rim he goes, kick out to Grothaus. This will be Schwinnin for three. Great ball movement yeah. by the Johnnies, reversed it. Schwinnin had a screen set up for him on the weak side. Grothaus found him, splashed it for three. His first, first one today. He's got four three-point field goals on the year. And right back at you, long three ball, Michael Tafflinger. His fifth three ball of the year, first basket for him today. Pretty stroke, he was four for five for, from three coming into this game. Pull up jumper, rolls out for Grothaus, Burke rebounds. Finds Quatman. Parker Judy, 
Foster had to come out of the basketball game because of picking up that third foul a moment ago on the offensive foul. Dr. Judy being pressured. Eventually puts the ball into Tafflinger's hands and they reset with Quatman. Burke, screen and roll, and finishes with the left hand. That was well done. Very well done. That's what the Johnnies did down at that end the first half. T-Birds give them a dose of their own medicine here in the third quarter. Elworth pull up jumper. Pretty shot, just yeah, beautiful just looking pure. shot. Yes. You know, he might be a coach's kid. He yeah, shoots the ball so, yeah. so well, great form. Uh -huh. All I can tell you, Mark, is when uh, I was coaching and we were getting ready to play the Johnnies and he was a fifth or sixth grader and he was out there practicing uh, with the team during warm-ups, I was glad he wasn't in the starting lineup. You know, that was a really good piece of officiating by Scott Nurse because the T-Birds didn't know whether they could pick the ball up or not and he single, single, get an auto offensive foul. Number three by number two, Landon Grothaus. He is down there rolling snake eyes by setting up the T-Bird offense and taking charges. Quatman's third foul was an offensive foul for him. I started to mention Scott Nurse signaled it was a tip the ball, and that, then the T-Birds knew they could go into their backcourt and get it. That was a really good piece of officiating there. It certainly was, but again, back to Grothaus. I think uh. when I said 32 charges last year, maybe some people didn't believe it. He's got three in a span of three minutes here, less than three. Definitely believable There's that he a three did that ball in the corner, and that one splashes for Jack Gruger, his third of the game. He's got nine, all from behind the arc. And there's a pressure. Gordhouse with a steal, headed to the rim. And Carson Parker went up and hammered the ball, but got a lot of body as well. Landon Grothouse again, making his mark on this game throughout the game, but right now, this first three minutes of the third quarter, it's been his playground. It really has been. Defensively especially, three charges, a steal, breakaway layup, draws the foul, gonna go to the line and shoot two. Carson Parker's a second foul. And all Landon is from the line is a 92% free throw shooter, leads the Johnnies in that category. He's made two today, looking at his third free throw opportunity of the game today and pushes it back to a five-point lead. That was the biggest number it was in the opening half. A 2-2-1 zone press, but they snap it. Nicely done. Carson Parker. Oh. Hello. Grothaus and Parker going at each other on opposite ends of the court. I love it. I love 17 it. 17 now in the game for him as Elwer gets inside, blocked by Burke. Here comes Carson Parker the other way. And he's going to be fouled that time by Nolan Schwenen. And Schwenen's going to pick up his third foul. Carson Parker was looking hard to go to the hole. The only reason he gave that up, there were three Johnnies between him and the basket, but he drew the contact and the foul. Brings Austin Munter into the game. You know, we got out of that first half with nobody getting three. All of a sudden, the T-Birds have two players with three, and uh, St. John's has one. So things are starting to pile up a little bit here for some individuals. But as we've talked about, they play a lot of guys. So, it, uh, you know, perhaps not as critical as if you were not very deep. Lob pass out. Carson Parker. Another long three. That one's short. And the rebound comes into Grothaus's hands. Pass inside. And... Going to get a hell ball. Yes, we are. Nice recovery by Carson Parker. He was out on the wing, got down there when the ball was passed to Munter, creates the hell ball tie up. Possession stays with the Johnnies. And hey, you know, while we got a minute, man. yeah, we want to throw a, a little, um, I don't know what the right word is, condolences, I guess, would be the right term. Danny Holbrook from WOSN and also from 931, the fan's mother passed away this weekend, and we're very sorry for Danny. And uh, we know that she's with Jesus Christ where she belongs, and we're grateful for that. And we hope that you will be with uh, Danny and his family over this uh, holiday weekend that's going to be coming up. Continued prayers for Danny and yes, his family. Yes, sir. Here's Grothaus. Landon pull up jumper is going to be short. Parker rebounds. T Bird's trying to tie, perhaps take a lead. Good reversal, looking in for Burke. Nice rotation by St. John's defensively. They really do a good job fronting and then getting help from the backside in there, don't they? 
They do, and it's a great decision by the T-Birds not to pass it in there because it was not available. Quatman lost the basketball. He hopped on it, though. And we're going to get a held ball that should favor Lima Central Catholic as we are just under halfway through the quarter. And I do like Quatman there. He just he, he cradled that like a fumble because everybody's coming after it. You try and get it out of there, it's not going to happen. He did the right thing. Great decision. Colin Feathers will enter for the Blue Jays. He wears a number 10, a 5'11 junior. I believe this is his first efforts for the game tonight. Coach Elwers played a lot of guys today. Quatman looking and lobs to Carson Parker in the lane. Works and works. It goes up left hand and leaves it short. That was a nice defensive job. Great defense. I like the footwork by Parker there. Just not enough strength with the left hand to get it above the rim. Here's a three. Short. Parker rebounds. Here comes Quatman. And they got Burke inside. Spin nice move. Spin. Powers up. He's going to draw a foul. That was one of the few times they better get it down there to him. And he went to work with it. Yeah, and he moved quickly to keep the double team from happening. It did occur, but because of his foot quickness, he was able to draw the foul as he was starting to spin to the basket. Colin Feathers picked up his first foul. Burke with a couple of free throws trying to knock the game up. 62% free throw shooter, Billy Burke, leads the squad. Seventh point for him. Aaron Munter back in the game. So is Landon Grothaus. You knew he wasn't going to set very long. Nope. Quick breather. Not, get back in there, he, he wouldn't let Coach Elwer let him set very long. <laughs> <laughs> Be tugging on his shirt to get back in the game. And rightly so. Here's Burke trying to knot this game up. And does so. Billy Burke has eight points, four and a quarter. We're tied at 41. Just a great game here. Both teams coming out, throwing punches here in the beginning of the third quarter. Here's Grothaus to the rim. Nope. Parker scraps for the rebound and yanks it away. And Frank Kill calls timeout. We're at 3.17 to go in the third, and we're tied. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewers supporting TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other local, locally produced programs. Donate now at WTOW.com and click Donate. Second timeout, Coach Kill. This time tied at 41. Yeah, 30-second timeout. Drawing up a play. We're up here in the crow's nest. I got a good view of it. These old eyes. See what he's drawing up there. Looks like maybe something on the right side. Might be looking at that ball screen on the right side of the floor. Let's see what we get. Burke to inbounds and gets it to Quatman. On to the right. Burke's going to get a screen to roll the glass, but they couldn't get it to him. Okay. Again, looking to go inside, to aren't they? Matched up with him on the switch. And they're really working to get inside, but look at all the help. Here's a three. That one will splash by Parker Judy, his second of the game. The glue guy gets it done offensively. Not a stat stuffer, but he's had two threes in this game thus far, and they have both been huge. Puts his team up by three. Elwer pull-up jumper. If he gets to the foul line that move, you might as well just put it in the book. Exactly. You have to come out and defend hard. you got to be under control, one-on-one -on -one driving line. But he took an up think and went to his left. And as you said, nothing but the bottom of the net. Single point lead. T-Birds to the rim. And another offensive foul. That was an easy call for yep. the official. This one will go against Michael Tafflinger. I like Tafflinger's aggressiveness, pressure offense, but he needed the jump stop. The, the Johnny's defense was definitely set up going the other way. Billy Burke's going to get a little bit of a break as Angelo Collins comes in. You, you got to wonder, what was it, uh, just a couple of weeks of practice for the T-Birds? And you want to make sure you have fresh bodies heading into the fourth quarter. And to, to wrap this one up as we got about 10 minutes to go. Here's Landon Grothaus off a of screen from 12 feet. And we're going to get a rebound foul that time. And that was a rarity yeah. in this game as far as Grothaus came off the screen, as you said, Mark, and he was wide open. And that just yeah. is not happening in this game. Both teams playing great defense. Ethan Druckenmiller went over the back and 
actually over the back is legal, through the back and got a foul. So I had a lot of fouls caught on me that shouldn't have yeah, been. Over the school. back is legal. On the back is not. Or through the back is not. Here's a long three. Oh, a splash. Quatman. Matthew Quatman. Points two, three, and four for him. His team leads by four. Good shooting quarter, Thunderbirds. Grothaus finds Elro on the three-point line. That ball's tipped out of bounds. Again, good rotation for LCC to get a hand up on Elwer. Angelo Collins comes up from the middle of the paint to get a hand up and force the missed shot. Elwer has had games of 22, 31, 29, 32. His low game of the season is 18. And coming in today, he was 20 of 37 from the three-point line. That's 54%. Will you take that? And for a freshman, for anybody at any level of any league, we get a foul on the out-of-bounds. Thunderbirds, who'd the foul go to? Looks like it goes to Carson Parker, who all of a sudden has three fouls. All in this quarter, Here comes Burke in. He's going to replace Parker, who looks like he could use a little bit of yep. a break anyway. Good rotation and, there. Yep. And Cameron Elward has how many today thus far? Uh, Cameron Elward today has one three-point field goal, so they did a good job defensively with him. But you better not let up because he's the guy that can light it up in a hurry. Here's Grothaus into the lane. The runner bounces around, doesn't fall, but he gets to go to the free throw line. Does a nice job pulling up there and draws the contact. Going to go to the free throw line, as you said, Mark, shooting two. Parker Judy picks up foul number two for him and also seventh team foul. So for the last nine minutes plus, Blue Jays will be shooting free throws. 15 in the game now for Landon Grothaus. And a couple of subs coming in. Looks like we're going to get number 12, Austin Munter, number 23, Drew Boggs into the game. Both of those guys have played earlier today. And it's not something that you necessarily try to coach, but offensively the T-Birds, I think they're going to want to go back inside, see if they can draw some fouls and get, the, get that number closer as far as uh, the Johnnies have three fouls in LCC seven. The free throw line is going to play a huge mm -hmm. part down the stretch. You mentioned Landon Grothaus, 92.9 from the free throw line. He's five for five today. Here's a pull-up jumper. Pretty, pretty. Quatman. Matthew Quatman, the sophomore. He's got six now, five in this quarter. His team goes back up four. Step back jumper, well defended. That was a really good job defensively. Here's Burke pushing things. Quatman, yep. and he traveled. Yep, got it going just a little bit too quick. Shuffled the puppies. Great defense as far as he was thinking three. The Johnnies recovered to the shooter, and then he shuffled him, turned I, over. I on had the an tibers. official tell me one time, you cannot do the Mexican hat, that hat dance with the ball <laughs> in your hands. <laughs> he just got going a little bit too quick that time. Here comes number 30 into the basketball game. That's Payne Cutlip. He's a senior. Yeah, that's five turnovers for the T-Birds in this quarter. And they've still put 18 on the board. They had good back cut Burke had to help. Here's Grothaus for three. Good hustle rebound that time for Munter. Pressure by Burke. Grothaus again. And let's see if Coach Elber says we're going to take the last shot of this quarter, trailing by four. I would say yes at this point in time with 12 seconds remaining. Let's see what they try to run this time. Off a of screen, Grothaus. This will be a long three that will miss. Burke rebounds. And the obligatory length of the pass throw. And with four-point lead for the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds as we head to the fourth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our scorebook today has been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 
Mark Shiny, Dave Bowen, as you said, Dave, 18-14 quarter, went the way of the Thunderbirds. They're going to take a four-point lead in the quarter number four. They're doing a nice job again of attacking the basket. They did have some turnovers in that quarter where I'm sure Coach Kill saying, hey, guys, take care of the basket. Let's move our feet. Let's not foul either and put the Jays on the free throw line. But again, nice quarter for both teams, really, but... The T-Birds come away with the lead. Let's talk about the foul situation. Lima Central Catholic has already committed seven fouls in the half. Carson Parker has three. Matthew Quatman three. Willie Foster with three. Just three team fouls in the half for Delphi St. John's, and only Nolan Schwenin has three for them. So foul situation against the T-Birds at this particular point in time, but they lead by four. Cameron Elwer works inside and can't. Here's Landon Grothaus with Foster who has three fouls. Munter goes to the rim, and ball fakes, and it gets hit out of bounds. I think Carson Parker got a hand on it. Yeah, nice penetration by the Blue Jays, and the T-Birds recover. Out of bounds for St. John's. Big possession here beginning the fourth quarter, trying to get the momentum back on their side. Grothaus the sets Jays. a back screen and then comes off a screen. Nope, he set a flare screen for Grothaus, but it was well defended. Grothaus curl cut. This will be a three by Schwenin. And he gets his own rebound. There's an offensive rebound for St. John's. Into the lane, ball fake jump shot, and it rolls around and will fall in. Cameron Elwers points 12 and 13. Nice job again, getting in the paint, getting, getting his feet set. Kissing it off the glass. Quatman gets his shot blocked by Elwer. Got a hand on just enough to disturb it. Elwer pull up from the three-point line. No, rebound Burke. That might have brought the fans out of their seat had that one fallen. Absolutely. Foster spins into the lane. Quatman had a big quarter and shoots a three that's short. Here's Cameron Elwood with yet another rebound. What's he going to do? He's going to ball fake and go baseline where he's cut off on a really nice defensive play by Quatman. Quatman's done a good job with him, and he still forced it up and scored through him, and Quatman gets foul number four. I'm just getting ready to say he's forcing the action too much there. A lot of good defense by Quatman, but he's able to go through the contact, kiss it off the window, and draw the foul. Elwer with the opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. Quatman with six points will sit down as he picks up foul number four. And here's a chance for point 16 for Cameron Elwer. And bounces it in. He is the only person not named Grothaus to shoot a free throw today. And a great start to the fourth quarter if you're a Blue Jays fan as they take the lead by one. 5-0 run here. And we're going to get a foul. I think somebody was holding inside. Yes, they were. That was Ethan Druckenmiller's second foul as he was holding Burke. If Willie Foster will be the inbounder. That was the fourth team foul. Coach Kill with a play call from the sidelines. Foster heads baseline, wants to pull up and can't. Parker works the lane, and he can't score. Good heads up uh, defensively, but also wise not to force it. And now they're in a situation where Parker can play out on the wing a little bit more with the other two bigs, Collins and Burke inside. Landon Grothaus just picked up his third foul, trying to keep Willie Foster from getting to the rim. 15 foul. Foster curls into the lane. Kick out. Parker, now Burke. Burke wants to go with his right hand and goes off glass. It doesn't go for him, but gets his own rebound and scores. Way to be persistent, Billy Burke. Yeah, great intestinal fortitude, better known as guts by Billy Burke right there. Got hit in the nose a little bit as well. Great offensive rebound and score. And we're going to get a held ball situation. That was Billy Burke's 10th point, so he becomes a double-figure scorer today. And the Blue Jays will get the, uh, the uh, T-Birds will get the ball on the held ball situation. I think Billy Burke might have a little blood, maybe not. He's not going to show it. He no. wants to stay in there. If he does, he's trying to sniff it back up, <laughs> yeah, isn't he? Yes. I'm not bleeding. Here's a three. 
A three ball for Parker Judy again. Get your cell phones out because the T-Birds have answered the run by the Blue Jays. Back and forth we go. Here's Grothaus and he gets a three. Landon Grothaus buries a three ball. It's 54 for the Thunderbirds. It's 53 for St. John's. We've got a timeout. We're coming back right after this. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. Looking for the perfect gift for out-of-town sports fans? WSN's broadcast channel can now be streamed anywhere in the world online. Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual subscription. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.wsn.tv or by downloading the Roku or Apple TV apps. Timeout went to the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. Each team has used two timeouts in the game. The Johnnies call the timeout. Coach Elwer calls the timeout after the made basket. The theme of his de his huddle, defense. Get a hand up on the shooter. Let's move our feet. Let's keep the ball out of the paint. That was the whole discussion as we were able to watch it from the crow's nest up here at Robert A. Arnson Gymnasium. Here's Foster. His team leads by one. We're presenting a Stolly Hustle award winner when this game comes to an end. Along with some other post-game thoughts when we wrap this one up. But right now, we have got five minutes plus basketball remaining and maybe even four minutes after that, Dave. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, I would, too. Foster working the lane and will draw a foul that will get the Thunderbirds taken out of bounds. That one goes to Ethan Druckenmiller. It's his third and team sixth. Here comes Burke back in the game. He was in the locker room at that timeout, wasn't he? He was. We did. We were on top of that. He did have a little blood. He's got some gauze up the nostril right now, but he's right back in there. The timeout actually kind of helped him, even though it was called by the uh, Blue Jays. And Carson Parker tried to muscle up for a basket. Instead, it goes to the free throw line. Nice job there by Willie Foster taking the ball out of bounds to find Parker on the opposite block. He goes up strong, draws the contact. You know, Willie Foster, he's a freshman out here as well, playing the game in a different way than Cameron Elwer, but yet still very, very effective in his own right. Free throw spins out. Dave, did you see who the foul was on? I, I did not see the official signal, and they're not putting them on the board here today. Sorry, Coach. Yeah, I, did I, grab I missed that, that one. one, and we'll try to get that corrected as we go along. Here's Carson Parker again, and that one he makes. He's got 18 in the game. Payne Cutlip will enter, and he will replace Michael Tafflinger. Tafflinger sits down with a made three-point field goal in quarter number three. Two-point lead. Thunderbirds. Hunter on top, guarded by Burke. Tried to get a little screen and roll action. Couldn't make it work that time. He's Landon Grothaus working against Foster. Foster has three fouls. Roadhouse in a screen from Elwer, playing cat and mouse behind it, and he slipped, and he was fouled. A.J. Kremer on the call, yep. the penetration coming around the right side. Willie We're going to go to the free yeah, throw foul line. Foul number four, and Willie wasn't happy with the call, and I would say good patience from Mr. Kremer to not ring him up for his technical foul. He understands the situation. Good, I think that was a good piece of officiating. Landon Grothaus, as you yeah. said, going to go to the free throw line again where he's been effective today and throughout the year up to this point. Ninth team foul, so we'll be shooting double bonus with the Blue Jays for the rest of this one. He missed that free throw. A rare miss for Grothaus. Yes, sir. Still a two-point lead, Thunderbirds. Here's Cutlip. Foster, who stayed in the game and shoots a long three. And nailed it. Willie Foster, second three ball tonight. Ten points for him in the game, pushes the lead to five. From distance, not even close to the line, drills it. Grothaus working the lane, doubled up down there. Has to kick it back out to Munter. And then Elwer. Boy, they doubled him up again, too. They did, and the rotational defense on the backside was solid as well. Grothaus goes strong off the glass, but too strong. Parker rebounds and pushes. Burke wants a three. Billy oh! Burke lights the lamp. 
Coach Kill so high on Billy Burke, but he talked about his touch around the basket, maybe needing to be a little softer. Nothing but nice cheesecake on that one from three at the bottom of the net, Mark. His first three ball of the year puts his team up eight and also forces a Delphi St. John's timeout. 3.27 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WLSM. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Our Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard from the Lee's in Wapak and Delphus. The last uh, seven points of the game have gone the way of the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds, and they t lead by eight. And it's a result of some great outside shooting. Three for four behind the three-point arc are the T-Birds here in the fourth quarter alone. That is a big reason for this span of eight points, our biggest lead either way of the game. It is with 3.27 to go in this one. The interesting thing is the Blue Jays give up 43.6 points in the game. They've already given up 61 today. So it's been a very good offensive performance this way for the team wearing blue. Here's a slip screen. Nice recover by, was, recovery right. by Carson Parker. He and Burke both got down there to discourage that. Elwood works in the lane. They got him doubled up. Yep, Burke again. See if he, they can Here's help Here's Grothaus, here. muscles it up and scores. 5'10 guy goes right to the glass and puts two on the board. He's got 21 in the game. His team trails by six. T-Birds were able to have two defensive stops off of either the pass or penetration. Could not get the third one, and it was Grothaus who was able to get to the backboard and score. The Blue Jays have 17 fouls, so it's one-on-one -on -one situation should they foul a T-Bird. Here's Burke. Foster heads baseline. Pull-up jumper from 17. Rebound Elwer. Here they come. Elwer works in the lane. Kick out. Schwen has hit a couple from outside today. Spins in the lane and gets... Boy, they've done a really good job of walling up, Dave. They absolutely have. Penetration they, is a staple for St. John's. It's been hard sledding in there today. And they did so twice in that particular possession. Then they get the ball tossed out of bounds and they get it back. That was a really solid defensive possession for the team in blue. Absolutely. Outstanding defense for the T-Birds. Coach Kill is going to look back at that on film. That would be a great possession to show the team that just, you know, in film <laughs> session, this is what we're all about. Excellent defense by LCC. Blue Jays on the 23rd go to Crestview, where they have Crestview here, I think, don't they? It's in this particular gym. Then they have Jefferson on the 28th. They go to Fort Recovery, their next league game on January 6th. LCC on Tuesday at Allen East. On Thursday, they have a Wayne Trace at home. So some good games for both of those teams. And Coach Kilwer, uh, Coach Kill, <laughs> is going to take <laughs> that timeout, Dave. He's still going to have a couple of left. He saw a guy trapped at midcourt and said, we're just going to take some time out and get the ball out of pressure situation. Yeah, I, I love what you just, Coach Kilwer. I mean, yeah. you put these two coaches I do, together. I, I do, and they're great I? on their own. You put them together, and yeah. you're going to a, a level that's unprecedented. But, no, great time out. I think the situation here, Mark, Coach Kill's going to say, we got to take care of the basketball, and we got to look to score, but it's got to be a great shot, a 90% shot. Work the ball. They've got to gamble a little bit, do the Johnnies now defensively. Let's make them pay for that, and let's find an uncontested look around the rim. So each team will have two timeouts remaining in the game. I'm trying to find the possession arrow in this gym, and I can't, so it must be someplace out of our viewing area. Either way, uh, it's going to be LCC basketball right near midcourt. And I think that possession does go with the Johnnies on the regular scoreboard, the possession is arrow. That that? Yeah, see it right underneath the score there. Um, <laughs> well, I thought that meant less than as you scored <laughs> <laughs> less than 55 points. I do see it now. I've got a basket in my way yep, hanging yep. there. Good, good eyes. But again, huge possession, and if the T-Birds either can find that bucket, uh, that uncontested shot, great. If they get fouled, they got to go to the line and hit their free throws. A little too early to put it in a complete deep freeze. Definitely too early to do that. Against a quality defense mm. like the Blue Jays, you got to look to score. They lob it inside. Parker, that was a well-executed play, and he finishes. That was a really nice play. I saw that play run for 30 years. Well, less than 30, but Coach Quarter cracks it. Collider would always run that Pull set. Jumper, Elwer. 
Burke rebounds under pressure. They throw it ahead, and we're going to get a layup and a finish. Good pass ahead, and Pucker Judy scores. Two big He's, buckets by the T-Birds. Pushes it to 10. The Johnny's got to score quick and think timeout. Pucker Judy with 11. For a guy who averaged a couple of games, Grothaus finishes. He's got 23. Coach L, we're going to stay with the defense. He's imploring his team to get up on the basketball. Parker, baseline kick out. Have to come after him pretty quick. The lead's at eight. And Cameron Elwer will get called for the foul. That's going to put Matthew Plotman at the free throw line. He's a 62% free throw shooter, second on the team for the T-Birds here in the young season for them. As an eight uh, foul game, it's only one and one at this particular point. Quatman is one for two from the free throw line today and has six points. Seven points a game and three and a half assists for this young man for the first couple of games. That one bounces around and goes. Again, nice soft touch by Quatman. He's hit some big buckets in this game. Looking to start driving some nails here at the free throw line. He averages seven a game. That's what he has right now. And he exceeds that with point eight. Back to a 10 point lead. Roadhouse trying to get loose from Foster. And to the rim he goes, and we'll draw a foul. That's what you want to try to do, score with the clock stop. Yep, attack the basket. Landon Grothaus has done that move right there throughout his career. And Willie Foster has fouled out. Willie will foul out with 10 points today and a couple of big three-point field goals. Yeah, real good game, floor game from Foster. Didn't get the steal, said he did the, the first half. He had that real nice steal mm. where he went down and scored there in the second quarter. Credit the uh, St. John's offense for understanding we got to take care of the ball a little bit better when Willie Foster's in the same area, too. Here's Grothaus, 23 points on the game. 24. See if Coach Elwer sends a sub to the table once Grothaus gets the ball. He's not going to. Uh, he put a couple of guys in the game before he stroked that one. 25 in the game now. Here's full court pressure. And the pass finally comes in. Parker throw it ahead. Here's Burke. And they don't just beat the press. They go score through it. Burke's got 15. Nicely done by the T-Birds right there. Here's Grothaus for three. Burke got pushed from behind. Good rebound position, and Colin Feathers shoved him. So we're going to walk down to the other end. Team foul nine, and Billy Burke, who had four points at halftime, has 11 in the second half, and chance to add to that. Yeah, Billy Burke with that big three to push that lead out there. Our post-game show today, we'll have our Stolly Hustle Award winner. And some stat numbers today when we wrap this one up. So stay with us today. Here's Burke's free throw. Is that his first free throw of the game? Yeah, he made two earlier. Made two back in quarter, number two. So he's, he's three two for two. Three. He's three for three today. Looking at four for four if he can nail this one. Two for two coming into the game. Back of the rims it. And uh, the rebound secured by Feathers. Played with the numbers too much. Cameron Elwer. Three out of the corner and timeout as Landon Grothaus has points 25, no, 26, 7, and 8. Just an outstanding game by Landon Grothaus, not just offensively, which, as you said, the points speak for themselves, but he's been great on defense. He's been a leader, as you would expect him to be, the three-year starter. Well, it looks like it's just going to be a little, come up a little short today. And while we have one more minute, Dave, if you follow WOSN Sports, one of our producers, truck and uh, truck directors, Wayne Getz, is having foot surgery on Monday. We wish Wayne the best. This will give him a chance to work on his ZZ Top beard <laughs> prior to the Christmas holidays. But we wish Wayne the best, and we're going to get him back and get our Truck One guys all together again next, uh, in the, the first part of the new year. Got to have the captain. Yes, we do. And we got, we got some good ones, my man. Yes, we do. 
LCC will take the basketball out of bounds. They lead by eight. And uh, St. John's has just a single timeout remaining in this one. They're going to go full denial, center field. Not guard the inbounder. Caught and very quickly fouled will be Quatman, who made a couple of moments ago. Is that foul 10? It is. And Matthew Quatman will head to the free throw line. This T-Bird squad, you know, this game was tight throughout, 49-45. Then St. John's at the beginning of the fourth quarter, they went ahead. And then we saw the spurtability, if you will, the T-Birds. They got up there by eight points, and they've kept it right there at 8-10 to 10 ever since that point. Putman rolls that one in. He is uh, four for five at the free throw line today. If he makes this one, he will become a double-figure scorer today. Short rebound, Elwara. He might be close to double figures in rebounds today. He pull up jumper for him. Back of the rim. Carson Parker goes and gets the rebound and will be fouled, fouled by Drew Boggs and will walk down to the other end and shoot another bunch of free throws. And the T-Bird faithful, they're starting to celebrate. They can smell a victory here today. And again, this annual battle on a Sunday afternoon. High school basketball, these two outstanding programs. It's been a pleasure today to call it. Coach Kill sent me some uh, game keys earlier in this week. Control Elwer, they did. They've held him to 16, held him to 16, <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously. And defend and then rebound at both ends, especially the offensive end for offensive second chances. And they have done all three of those today. Right. First free throw good. Second as well, 22 in the game, Carson Parker. They've got a 24-point quarter going here. Grothaus gets it stripped loose. Quatman has it. And gets taken away by Elwer. Numbers four on three. And it's tipped out of bounds on a good hustle play by Parker Judy. You know, the T-Birds have taken advantage of when transition has been there. It hasn't been there often, but when it has been, they've done it. And then in the half court, they've worked consciously to get the ball inside. They kicked it out when it when that wasn't there, and then they've hit the offensive glass. Landon Grothaus continues to work inside, goes with the left hand that time. That's 30 for him today. I don't know if that's and a career high, but Coach, it's got to be close. Coach Kill yelling from up here, just hold on to it. They do, and the Thunderbirds will come into Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium. They will take a 73-64 victory over the homestanding Delta St. John's Blue Jays. David will be back in a moment with the post-game show. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. We're back at Robert A. Arnsum Gymnasium where the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds have committed taking a 73-64 win over the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. Our first order of business today is to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Check out the WSN YouTube page for the highlights of tonight's winner. And we've decided to go with Carson Parker. Carson Parker, number 10 from the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds, put 22 on the board. David got him off to a good start and did a lot of other things as well. Yeah, what I liked about Carson is when the T-Birds needed something to happen, especially at the offensive end. He had no problem being the initiator. He didn't have to score it, but he was involved with their offensive set, whatever the case may be. He posted up. He stepped outside. He found open teammates. Just real solid all the way around offensively. And then defensively, he was a force on the boards and did a great job both on the ball and with help principles against that St. John's penetration. You brought Kent Ralston with you today to keep some stat numbers for you. What, what numbers did Ode tell you today? Yeah, the old point guard teammate from <laughs> back in 1984. But, yeah, the Johnnies, they ended up as a whole shooting 44% from the floor, which isn't bad at all. The second half, they were um, 6 for 15 from 2 and 4 for 14 from 3. And, again, 44% overall. LCC blistered the Nets. Overall, 25 for 44. 57 percent did a great job they were five for eight from two in the second half seven for ten from three in the second half and we commented on that they're shooting outside 
the second half, that was the difference. That was really, really good for them. Let's look at Delphi St. John's today. They will drop to four and two on the season. They are one and one in the MAC. Quarter scores of 18, 13, 14, and 19. They put 64 on the board today. Landon Grothaus led them with 30 today. They got 16 from Cameron Elro. They got another nine, all from the three-point line by Jack Gerker. Lima Central Catholic, they will go to 2-1 on the season. Quarter scores, how about this, 15, 16, 18, and 24. They put 42 points on the board in the second half, and great balance for them. You mentioned Carson Parker. He had 22, but they got 15 from Billy Burke. They got 11 from Parker Judy, 10 from Willie Foster, and 9 from Matthew Quatman. They missed it by a point for putting five guys in double figures. And when you can put five in double figures, you're going to be very, very effective. You're going to win a lot of ball games. And Parker Judy, he's, as we said, that glue guy, he's not someone that you're looking at as someone that's going to put up a whole lot of numbers, but he did so today, and that ended up being a huge factor. Yeah, and they put 73 on the board against a team that was giving up 43 on the season. So let's talk about the JV game today. Delphi St. John's won that one 62-38. Our scoreboard today has been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. We want to thank our crew. That would be Megan Sherrick and Lexi Waddle here at Robert A. Arnsum Gymnasium. Nick Fraley will edit this back at the station. Dave Bowen, our last game before Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and to your family. Appreciate what you did for us today. And Lima Central Catholic will come into this gym and take a 73-64 victory over the Delphus St. John's Blue Jays. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.